Book 3, Chapter 25 Of the Poverty of Cincinnatus and of Many Other Roman Citizens Elsewhere, I have shown that no ordinance is of such advantage to a commonwealth as one which enforces poverty on its citizens. And although it does not appear what particular law it was that had this operation in Rome, especially since we know the agrarian law to have been stubbornly resisted, we find, as a fact, that four hundred years after the city was founded, great poverty still prevailed there, and may assume that nothing helped so much to produce this result as the knowledge that the path to honors and preferment was closed to none, and that merit was sought after wheresoever it was to be found. For this manner of conferring honors made riches the less courted. In proof whereof, I shall cite one instance only. When the consul Minutius was beset in his camp by the Equians, the Roman people were filled with such alarm, lest their army should be destroyed, that they appointed a dictator, always their last stay in seasons of peril. Their choice fell on Lucius Quintius Cincinnatus, who at the time was living on his small farm of little more than four acres, which he tilled with his own hand. The story is nobly told by Titus Livius, where he says, this is worth listening to by those who contemn all things human as compared with riches, and think that glory and excellence can have no place unless accompanied by lavish wealth. Cincinnatus, then, was plowing in his little field when there arrived from Rome the messengers sent by the Senate to tell him he had been made dictator and inform him of the dangers which threatened the Republic. Putting on his gown, he hastened to Rome, and, getting together an army, marched to deliver Minutius. But when he had defeated and spoiled the enemy, and released Minutius, he would not suffer the army he had rescued to participate in the spoils, saying, I will not have you share in the plunder of those to whom you had so nearly fallen a prey. Minutius he deprived of his consulship, and reduced to be a subaltern, in which rank he bade him remain till he had learned how to command and before this he had made Lucius Tarquininus, although forced by his poverty to serve on foot, his master of the knights. Here, then, we see what honor was paid in Rome to poverty, and how four acres of land sufficed to support so good and great a man as Cincinnatus. We find the same poverty still prevailing in the time of Marcus Regulus, who, when serving with the army in Africa, sought leave of the Senate to return home that he might look after his farm, which his laborers had suffered to run to waste. Here again we learn two things worthy of our attention. First, the poverty of these men and their contentment under it, and how their sole study was to gain renown from war, leaving all its advantages to the state. For had they thought of enriching themselves by war, it had given them little concern that their fields were running to waste. Further, we have to remark the magnanimity of these citizens, who, when placed at the head of armies, surpassed all princes in the loftiness of their spirit, who cared neither for king nor for commonwealth, and whom nothing could daunt or dismay, but who, on returning to private life, became once more so humble, so frugal, so careful of their slender means, and so submissive to the magistrates and reverential to their superiors, that it might seem impossible for the human mind to undergo so violent a change. This poverty prevailed down to the days of Paulus Aemilius, almost the last happy days for this republic, wherein a citizen, while enriching Rome by his triumphs, himself remained poor. And yet so greatly was poverty still esteemed at this time, that when Paulus, in conferring rewards on those who had behaved well in the war, presented his own son-in-law with a silver cup, it was the first vessel of silver ever seen in his house. I might run on to a great length, pointing out how much better are the fruits of poverty than those of riches, and how poverty has brought cities, provinces, and nations to honor, while riches have wrought their ruin, had not this subject been often treated by others.